Jehovah's servants are busy people. We share in the preaching work, we attend Christian meetings, and we study the Bible and the publications provided by the faithful and discreet slave class. Still, it is a continuous struggle. Our success as Christians would require vigorous effort. But with so many things to do, we must not allow ourselves to be overwhelmed or weighed down. Some brothers may have allowed certain aspects of their service to Jehovah to become somewhat routine. We could unwittingly adopt a half-hearted attitude toward our sacred service. Surely, we do not want that to happen. Jehovah's Witnesses are busy people is an absolute understatement. Take this guy for example. He is a normal dude trying to make an honest living. He gets up early, works hard doing a physically demanding job that leaves him exhausted. Now most people would be thinking, Everybody's working for the but as a Jehovah's Witness, he does not have time to relax even though he is absolutely exhausted. Yes, even on his lunch break, he tries to prepare for his midweek meeting because it is the only chance he may get in the day. Uh-oh, what is this? Is he? Yes, he's actually going to relax for a few minutes and it looks like it's paying off. Good call. Well, back to climbing ladders and working those calves. At least he is staying healthy. Three hours later. After a long day of work, he comes home and makes himself some food and sits down determined to get his studies in now. But maybe he will be able to concentrate on the material better if he studies after dinner. An episode of The Office could not hurt, right? And besides, having a quick laugh will be good for him. Careful with that wine though, bud. You might get sleepy after you eat. Oh no. Well, at least his loyal dog knows he needs to get up. Well now he is really going to need to move fast to get to the Kingdom Hall on time. Looks like he needs a shave because beards aren't allowed. Oh, that's unlucky, it's already 6.30 and the meeting starts at 7. Not gonna happen tonight. Now clearly he has no time to actually study, but someone sitting behind him at the meeting might notice if his study publications are blank. He has the solution. Throw in some quick markers here and there, make sure to comment a few times, and no one will know that he didn't study. Perfect. Off to the meeting. All right, so a quick disclaimer with this video. This was the second video that we ever shot over here at the JW Thoughts channel. And after it was edited and put together, we looked back at it and thought, that, that's not the best. Uh, the whole studio thing was out of focus and the microphone was facing the wrong direction. I'm very new at making videos. And so some of those early videos were a little bit cringe, but the reason that we're releasing this one now is because we have a huge project that we're working on and it's going to be out probably next week and it is involving some technology that I'm not all that familiar with. So having to learn uh, stuff like that. So this is going to be a JW Thoughts archive. Please enjoy. <laughs> and welcome to the JW Thought Studio. My name is Wally and I am here to talk about studying as it pertains to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, as you can see in that opening uh, little skit, studying occupies a fairly important place for um, members of the Jehovah's Witnesses because they're constantly being told the importance of studying. And yet what oftentimes happens is that you get so bogged down just living your life that you don't have time. And so what we used to call it was the Zorro study. You grab the old marker, whoosh, 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 boom, it looks like you've studied at least, make a couple comments, and no one will be the wiser. Now, of course, that's not what Watchtower wants you to do, and we'll get into a little bit of that more. But this is the basis for the discussion, and I think studying is really interesting because it really empowers Jehovah's Witnesses 
to think very highly of themselves. Um, I remember there was a phrase uh, when I was in the organization where people would say, even our little children know more about the Bible than most people that have studied it for their entire lives. And that's absolutely outrageous. What they really mean is, hey, we force our little kids to learn all of these ideas that we have and they're able to regurgitate it successfully. Never therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words uh, in this adulterous and sinful generation. The, the reason that they're able to talk so confidently um, about you know, their biblical knowledge and their understanding and how it's so much better and higher um, than everyone else's is, is because they put so much emphasis on reading and studying the Bible. Now, it's really sad, though, that they think that they have everything figured out, because if you think about it, one of the greatest joys in life is learning new things, new ideas, having honest discussions, debates. It, it's what kind of drives us. It keeps your mind going. It keeps your life going. Whereas if you think, nope, I got it all figured out, it's just so sad because you're at this place where you're so arrogant and so confident, you think, well, there's really nothing left for me to learn. And again, they come up with this idea because they study so much. But what I came to find out as I was exiting the organization was that they don't actually study at all. What they're really doing is reviewing. Because when you study something, you're taking in a lot of different information, and a lot of times you're able to formulate, you know, your thoughts on it. Um, you're able to suss out, you know, what is true, what's likely true, um, what is patently false, you know, what's going to be valuable to you. And you're able to actually learn something and incorporate it and even talk about it intelligently with other people. Yet... For Jehovah's Witness, and when you're talking about the Bible, they can't learn anything new because they're not studying the Bible. They're reviewing what the Watchtower tells them to. They're reviewing what the governing body um, is telling them. And I just think that that's ridiculous because the governing body has literally said, you know what, you guys cannot handle um, reading and studying the Bible. You want the truth. You want the truth. You can't handle the truth. No truth handler you. Bah, I deride your truth handling abilities. So we're going to have to do it for you. We'll tell you what you are supposed to think. We'll tell you what we find and then we'll pass that back on to you. And that's just so much power because they've literally convinced millions of people that they can shut their brains off and stop learning and just listen to us. Today, the faithful slave was put in charge of providing spiritual food for God's people who number into the millions. The slave also shows complete trust in Jehovah that he will guide them with his Holy Spirit. What makes it possible for the faithful and discreet slave to provide precious spiritual food? I will give you insight and instruct you in the way you should go, says Jehovah. Psalm 32, verse 8. Today, Jehovah provides direction to the slave through Jesus. Jesus, in turn, provides direction for his people through the faithful and discreet slave. We can have, therefore, full confidence in the scriptural insight, understanding, and guidance. So let me bring in a few quotes and get some basis for what I'm on about. So back in 2007, there was a question box. Um, 907 Kingdom Ministry. And a question box that was entitled, Does the Faithful and Discreet Slave, and that's synonymous with the governing body, endorse independent groups of witnesses who meet together to engage in scriptural research or debate. What do you think I'm going to say to you? No. Correct. And I'll just read most of this article. No, it does not. 
and yet in various parts of the world a few associates a few associates of our organization have formed groups to do independent research on bible related subjects some have pursued an independent group study of biblical hebrew and greek so as to analyze the accuracy of the new world translation others explore scientific subjects related to the bible they create websites and chat rooms for the purpose of exchanging and debating their views. They've also held conferences and produced publications to present their findings and to supplement what is provided at our Christian meetings and through our literature. We have these groups of people that are getting together that aren't the governing body that are doing research. So when the governing body gets together and they do research, that's one thing when an independent group that's not you know doesn't have god's spirit or whatever that's obviously bad and the other one that was interesting was uh, others explore scientific subjects related to the bible now this is amusing because they have so much printed material where they say specifically the bible's not a science textbook but when it talks about scientific matters it's surprisingly accurate just stick with us. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. And just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. What's the problem if people want to go research this and verify those claims themselves? That's a positive thing. There's no negative side of that whatsoever. Um, I'll carry on. Uh, throughout the earth, Jehovah's people are receiving ample spiritual instruction and encouragement at congregation meetings, assemblies, and conventions, as well as through the publications of Jehovah's organization. Under the guidance of his Holy Spirit and on the basis of his word of truth, Jehovah provides what is needed so that all of God's people may be fitly united in the same mind and in the same line of thought and remain stabilized in the faith. Surely we are grateful for Jehovah's spiritual provisions in these last days. Thus, the faithful and discreet slave does not endorse any literature, meetings, or websites that are not produced or organized under its oversight. So again, you have this, we will give you everything that you need. It's, Jehovah's people are receiving ample instruction. Everything that you need will be right here in our publications. There's no reason to do any um, research on your own. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. Do not rely on your own understanding, on our own wisdom. Trust in Jehovah, follow his direction. And then it talks about how it's commendable for individuals to use their thinking ability in support of the good news. However, no personal pursuit should detract from what Jesus Christ is accomplishing through his congregation on earth today. In the first century, the Apostle Paul warned about getting involved in exhausting and time-consuming subjects, such as genealogies, which end up in nothing, but which furnish questions for research rather than a dispensing of anything by God in connection with faith. All Christians should strive to shun foolish questionings and genealogies and strife and fights over the law, for they are unprofitable and unfruitful. So again, kind of telling people, you're pretty much wasting your time. You don't really need to be doing this extra research. Everything that we need is right there in our publications. And the reason for that is so that way we're, uh, what did it say in the last paragraph? A uh, fitly united in the same mind and in the same line of thought. Like how creepy does that sound? Um, and then the last paragraph, it says, for those who wish to do extra Bible study and research, we recommend that they explore insight on the scriptures, all scriptures inspired of God and beneficial, and our other publications, such as those that discuss the prophecies found in the Bible books of Daniel, Isaiah, and Revelation. These provide abundant material for Bible study and meditation, whereby we can be filled with accurate knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual comprehension in order to walk worthily of Jehovah to the end of pleasing him as we go on bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the accurate knowledge of God. So you have it right there. Even if you want to do extra research, 
you know where you can do more research? In more of our publications. That's not doing extra research. That's just re reviewing. Again, it's reviewing the same thing that they've already said. Because if when a watchtower is written, when any of their books are written, I guarantee you, you can find almost the exact same sentences that are just copy pasted from the inside books, from older publications, back into newer ones. So you're not doing more research, you're just reviewing the same thing ad nauseum, and it's quite exhausting. So that's what the governing body says. We'll give you everything that you need, and you don't have to worry about anything else. Now this turned out to be quite problematic for me because I'm a fairly studious person. Now me, myself, right, and then I, and then myself, right, me, me. I couldn't tell this one about I because I was talking about myself, and then me. And I like reading. I like studying. I like doing research. And Beware the me monster. And it created a real issue for me when I was still an active member, and that was just boredom. Like, being really, really bored. Because I can sit down, and if I have the time, I can read and research and study a subject on anything for eight hours and be completely happy. Like, I, it really, really, really gives me a lot of joy to be able to do that. And so it doesn't take very long to just blast through all recent Watchtower material. Like, it really doesn't take that long. And something became readily apparent as I was going through that older material. They just repeat the same things over and over and over again. And it's boring. Like, there's no point if you're someone that really likes to study, and if you were like me and took your faith very seriously. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! ...and wanted to understand it, there was almost no point to studying anymore. I got to the point where it's like, I did just Zorro study, and that was fine. If I had to give a talk on any subject, I could literally prepare for like 10 minutes, and it was fine, because I just, there wasn't enough like new stuff, and I knew it so well, I could just kind of pick it up and talk about it. So SHUT THE F*** UP! So it, it really just caused me to be ridiculously bored. And I have a fairly active mind that requires a lot of stimulation, or else I just kind of lose it and go crazy. So I, I had to just keep doing something. And this is what I found to be one of the more interesting aspects about how much they tell you, well, you need to study, you need to study, you need to study. And that's like, well, if I have to study something, I guess I'll have to look into things a little bit more. I think the key to sort of unlocking those mental shackles that the organization wants to keep you in is to just follow their advice and study like a madman. Because once you go through everything, you're going to be left like, okay, well, you know, what's next? And you're going to start to ask yourself a very important question. What the hell is going on here? And that's actually how I woke up. It was a moment of, what's really going on here? And you start at Genesis, and instead of, you know, going and looking through the Insight book, which you've read three times, you like, well, maybe I'll just get a pen and paper and, like, write out my thoughts on it. And I started doing that, and it was like, okay, you read Genesis 1, and it says there's this one sort of creation story, and then you jump into Genesis 2, and again, boom, it starts the creation story over again. So as you're just jotting down your own notes, it's like, wait, I've read the Bible 20 something times and I've never noticed this before. And it snowballs and you start asking yourself fundamental questions. What is going on here? But the Watchtower absolutely hates this. They don't want people to get so far into studying where they start asking real honest questions. So I found a, a Watchtower quote um, in 1999, that's the December 1st, under the article, Do Not Let Your Strength Become Your Weakness, and it says, uh, We might develop an intellectual view of God's Word and Bible-based study publications. Someone of keen mind might also take an intellectual view of the Bible and Bible study aids. However, such knowledge only puffs up or inflates the ego like a balloon. 
it does not build up loving Christian relationships. So, I mean, there you have it. If you start being thinking about things in an intellectual way, it's because of pride. It's only going to make you puffed up like a balloon till you pop. It popped. But that's not the case. Like, that's honesty. That's hum- It's humility to say, I don't fully understand this. I need to do more research. I don't have all the answers, so I need to understand it more fully. It's arrogance to say, well, no, I already know it's true because it's true, and the governing body says it's true, so it's true. They have this idea about what puffs up completely backwards. And again, what's wrong with taking an intellectual view of their of the Bible and their publications? Like, what, what is the issue with that? Well, I can tell you it's because they're, they're scared of debates. They're scared of questioning. They're scared of research. Now, how could that possibly be? That someone that's claiming to have a monopoly on people's spirituality and their understanding of the Bible would be scared of you looking at their material in an intellectual way. I wonder why that could possibly be. And we're back in it, boys. Um, Here is another quote. Uh, This is from SG Study 7. I think that's the school guidebook um, under the section, Study is Rewarding. And it says, study should be done with a view of being able to recall and explain the material clearly. Perfect. Casual reading, while it has a proper place in our lives, is not study. Study requires research, thought, and application. Uh, Do not plan to cover more material than you can effectively, or you will find your study shallow and unrewarding. Rather, allow time for research and meditation. However, plan to cover sufficient material so that you will see that you are really accomplishing something. Now here's where things get a little more dodgy. The Christian student does not rely on his own ability to find his way into the deep things of God's word of truth. He realizes that he needs the help of God's Holy Spirit, God's organization of devoted servants, and the word itself. That is why it is appropriate to seek God's blessing on study periods by prayer. I don't understand that that sentence does not rely on his own ability to find his way. Well, I have to. I I I can't use something other than my head, my brain, to get into material. If I'm only looking at your stuff or I'm only looking at, you know, one tiny little pigeonhole of a greater part of, you know, a research a subject or something I'm interested in studying, I the only thing I have is my head. And getting through the information with that. So then they say, well, instead of relying on yourself, you need to rely on the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, if someone can prove that the Holy Spirit actually exists and demonstrates itself in um, physical ways here on earth, then cool. I guess we could keep that in there. But as far as I'm aware that you can't, so you can chuck that one out. And then the word itself, uh, that is redundant because if you're going to study the Bible, you need to use the Bible so you can chuck that one out. So what they're really just saying is he realizes he needs the help of our organization. Don't rely on yourself, but rely on us. Well, what are you relying on? Well, your your head and the Bible. Uh, okay, well, I could do the, 100% the exact same thing. It, it really doesn't make any sense to me. Um, let me just read one more quote, and this is, for me personally, I think one of the more interesting sort of how would you call it, double standards that the Watchtower has, and it has to do with um, their opinion of biblical scholars, or they say so-called scholars, and the hilarious intersection that the Watchtower has with them. Uh, This might get a little choppy, but hopefully you can bear with me. Um, This is from a 2002 Watchtower 615, uh, follow the royal pattern. During your study, Avoid the approach common to many so-called Bible scholars. They focus excessively on analyzing texts as if the Bible were of human origin. Some of them try to fix a distinct audience for each book, or to conjure up an object and supposed viewpoint that a human author 
of each book had in mind. I'm going to pause right there and just bring in a few quotes because I think it's absolutely hilarious that they say, you know, they're focusing excessively on analyzing these texts when that's what the Watchtower does and encourages its members to do as well. Um, so they say uh, they try and conjure up an object in a supposed viewpoint uh, that the author had. Well, in the Watchtower 2016, um, May articles called fully benefit from Jehovah's provisions um, but it talks about some different ways and one of them is talking about doing research so what do they say well in the first article it said remember to avoid this approach and then now they're saying do research using tools available to us we might look for such information as who wrote this portion of the scriptures where and when was it written what significant events occurred when a particular Bible book was written. Background information of this nature may bring to light lessons that are not immediately obvious. Uh, in the Watchtower 19 of May, page 29, paragraph 15, it says, First ask yourself, what do I know about the writer of the book? Who was he? Where did he live? What was his occupation? The background of the writer may also explain his choice of words or the type of illustrations he used. As you read the Bible, look for phrases that reflect the personality of the writer. That's the end of my little um, extra quote. So now jumping back into that original O2 Watchtower. The effect of such human reasoning may be that of relegating Bible books to mere history or viewing them as reflecting evolutionary approaches to religion. Other scholars give themselves over to word studies, like the philology of Bible literature. They get more involved in studying word origins and citing Hebrew and Greek meanings than in the important than the import of God's message. Do you think that such approaches are likely to impart deep and motivating faith? Word origins. I mean, come on. How often do you read in Watchtower publications? Well, this word can also sort of mean this, and by that we can, it means this, and then we can really derive the, f the true meaning and understanding of this. They do it all the time, and it's absolutely ridiculous to hear them saying, well, this is what the Bible scholars do. Well, they just try and focus on all these you know, details of this and that, and they get bogged down. We would never want ourselves to be come over by that. And yet they do the same thing, and it's considered totally fine. So if, if a so-called Bible s scholar wants to dive into the history, it's a waste of time. A foolish journey down vanity's shit creek. But if the governing body needs to act like, you know, little mama bird, chewing up the food, digesting all of it, and then spitting it back into the mouth of their believers, boom, that is totally okay. Use there is um, when it says do research using the tools available to us. You can research, but we have to tell you exactly what you can research and how you can research. And I just think that the whole process that witnesses go under whenever they're trying to, you know, do their personal Bible study is honestly just pathetic. You're, you're not going to learn anything by, by doing it in the way, because they're not getting the full picture. They're not getting as much information as possible to suss out a probable truth. They're just taking a few guys' opinions and running with it. And their influence can be tremendous. And in one of the very brief conversations that I had um, with my dad, so I had this idea that if the Watchtower quoted from a book, then it might then it should be okay for me to read that same book which it seemed sound and logical too so i was reading out of the the old blue book like creation i know i should have done my research this is all off the cuff but the old blue book with the guy where it talks about evolution and they quoted uh richard dawkins in it
And readers then think, how can a quote be a rumor? A quote can be taken out of context. Critical reports often give only part of a matter and leave out other aspects. And so I was like, oh, well, I guess they read that book, so it must be okay. So I wanted to read it myself. And so when I went to talk to my dad, I showed him a quote in there. And I'm like, hey, I actually have this book. Can I show you the full quote? And he was like, no. I'm like, well, well, I think that the Watchtower misquoted the the person here. They're, they're trying to make it sound like he was making a point that he wasn't. And he's like, no, no, I don't need to see that. I'm like, well, wouldn't she be interested? Wouldn't she be curious if the Watchtower is like misquoting a scientist? And he's like, no, no, no. The brothers at Bethel, they do the research and that's all. We don't have to worry about that. And this is an elder. He's in charge of shepherding the flock. And that was his answer. No, I don't need to look at it because the governing body, they, they are the ones that can research it and give me all the relevant points. And that, that, that was it. And I just found that absolutely fascinating that you could get to such a point where you're willing to say, no, it can't be real, it's not real. And uh, later on, there was other instances of this. But again, I think it all stems back to how the witnesses are taught to study and do research that they can't do it on your own. And you can't rely on yourself. You can't do it, but we can. And it's absolutely disgusting that they manipulate their members in such a horrible way. Whether they know they're doing it or whether they're just trying to protect them from leaving because they do believe it in the truth, hey, I'll leave that up to you. But yeah, that's most of my thoughts on uh, study, fake studying, my relationship to it, how I think it actually can be a tool for uh, people waking up and getting out of the organization. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. And here at the JW... Ah, damn it, I always fuck up these endings.